Welcome to Greenlee Library. My name is Danielle Apfelbaum, and I'm the Scholarly Communication Librarian at the Thomas D. Greenlee Library. Today I'll be showing you several resources that will be especially helpful as you go through MLS 425. By the end of this brief video, you'll be able to access the Greenlee Library homepage from your MyFSE account, select and conduct a search in databases appropriate for topics related to the medical laboratory sciences, and cite books and periodicals in APA and MLA format. Let's get started. First, to get to the library's resources, you need to get to the library's homepage. I recommend going through your MyFSC account to do this. Go to farmingdale.edu and click My FSC in the upper right-hand corner of the page. Enter your FSC credentials. Your username will be your email address minus the at farmingdale.edu. Your password will be the same password you use to log into your email, Blackboard, and so on. If you have any difficulty logging into your MyFSC account, try resetting your password. If you still have difficulty, please contact Help Desk at helpdesk at farmingdale.edu. Once you arrive at your account, click Library in the left-hand vertical menu. This will take you to the library homepage. Now, before we begin any of our searches today, we need to talk about the literature review. Just like you, I'm also a student, and every semester I have at least one 20 to 40 page literature review to write, so I want to share some tips that'll save you a lot of time and frustration as you go through the process. First, creating a literature review is not a linear process. It's iterative. What I mean by that is that you do not gather the sources and then go and write the paper. That's not how it works. Instead, Reading, researching, and writing should be happening simultaneously. Joan Didion once wrote, I don't know what I think until I write it down. This is as applicable to writing an academic literature review as it is to crafting an entire book of creative nonfiction. Only when you put pen to paper, or fingers to keypad, can you really begin to see how well your ideas and the sources you're using to support those ideas do or do not fit together. It's like assembling a jigsaw puzzle. You won't know what you're missing until you actually start putting the pieces together. So it's better to start crafting your review, even if the complete vision of your final paper is still a little bit fuzzy. So at the very least, begin with an outline. Again, this will change as you read, but at least you'll have a place to organize your findings from literature as you go. I'll tackle creating a good outline in just a little bit. Second tip, remember, a literature review is not a summary. It's a synthesis. Think about it this way. Let's say that you and your partner need to purchase a vehicle, so you both research cars that you might buy. When your partner asks you what you learned about the midsize sedan that you're interested in, you're not going to begin by saying, well, review A said this, and review B said that, and so on. What you'll probably say is something like this. A bunch of reviews said it got great mileage, but maintenance costs are very high. There was no consensus on trunk space, about half of the reviewers said it was inadequate, and the other half said it was about average. That's synthesis. Making this happen in your paper is not all that different than discussing the various merits of a potential purchase. So let's say you're writing a literature review on reducing contamination in phlebotomy. First, we're going to start off with a preliminary outline. We're doing this for two reasons. First, it's going to give structure to your search, and second, it's going to give you a place to take notes and make connections between resources as you read. Your introduction is where you make your case for why we need a literature review on this topic in the first place. The bulk of your paper will answer the question, what do we know about this topic? But it'll do so by addressing a specific aspect of each area of knowledge. Now when you begin, it's fine to take an educated guess about what each of these areas might be. Again, this will give your outline structure, and you can and should revise as you go. For example, I'm not a phlebotomist, but I'm going to take an educated guess that training, specific standards, procedures, and protocol, and laboratory management probably have some kind of role to play with regard to preventing contamination. So each of these areas will become a section in my outline, and any time I come across a study whose findings fall into one of these areas, I'll just take notes about it in that section so I know that that's where it belongs in my paper. If I come across a study that doesn't fall into one of my categories, I'll just create a new section in my outline and put it there. Again, you still need to be sure that you don't just summarize each study. 
That's helpful in the outline, but you'll need to tie those individual studies together in your review. Here's what I mean. Let's say we're working on the section of our paper about methods and protocols, and we've found 10 articles on the use of method A to reduce contamination. Six articles say that the reduction in contamination using method A was statistically significant. Three articles report that contamination rates were reduced, but that the rate of reduction was not statistically significant. And one article says that the use of method A resulted in a statistically significant increase in the rate of contamination. Again, when it comes time to write the paper, you're not going to write, many researchers have examined the use of method A in contamination. Researcher 1 says XYZ. Instead, you will synthesize. Imagine yourself giving a colleague the SparkNotes version of all of these studies. In this case, when you translate your outline notes to your paper, it should start to shape up like this. While a majority of existing studies have reported that the use of method A has resulted in statistically significant reductions in contamination, other studies have reported reductions without statistical significance. At least one study has reported statistically significant increases in the rate of contamination as a result of the use of method A. Of course you'll elaborate further, but the idea again is that you are synthesizing the material, not summarizing every single individual study. Now a couple of other things that could change the course of your paper might happen, so here's what to look out for and how to deal with it when it happens. First. You might find that there's an enormous amount of research relating to what you thought was just a small section or subsection of your paper. In that case, you might want to scale down the scope of your review and restructure accordingly. For instance, let's say that we find 100 articles on education and reducing contamination. Instead of focusing on all of our original topics, we could scrap the sections on protocols and laboratory management and focus just on education. This would require new sections, so again, as an example, we might revise our paper to include sections that would synthesize the literature by focusing on the type of education, such as undergraduate degree programs, certificate programs, on-the-job training, and continuing education programs. Second, you might find that there's no research or very little research on your overarching review topic. In this case, you'd want to scale up and revise the scope of your paper. We'll use the same example, but we'll work through it backwards this time. So let's say you started out with the intention to research the role of continuing education programs on reducing contamination, but you only find 10 articles. In this case, you'd want to broaden your topic in a meaningful way. So you could expand your focus to include all forms of education specifically designed for in-service professionals, including certificate programs, webinars, online courses, and on-the-job training. There's no right or wrong way to scale up or scale down a topic. However, you will definitely be more successful if you consult the research as you go through the process of broadening or narrowing your focus and revising your outline. So now that we've had a good chat about the literature review, let's get to finding resources. Because you're in a medical laboratory sciences course, I highly recommend beginning with the medical laboratory sciences guide, where you can find all of the recommended databases for getting started with your research. To get to the research guides, go to the library homepage. Scroll down until you see the section labeled Featured Resources. Locate and click Research Guides. From here, click Medical Laboratory Science. When you get to the guide, you can use the horizontal menu to browse resources by format and focus. For now, we're going to make sure that we are on the Articles and Databases tab. We'll look at two library databases, Medline with Full Text and ProQuest Research Library, and one web resource, which is also a database of medical literature, PubMed Central. First, we'll look at Medline. Click Medline from the Research Guide to enter the database. If you are off campus, you may be prompted to enter your FSC credentials before being directed to the database. Once in the database, you will see your advanced search options. Medline is provided by EBSCO, which provides several other health and medical databases. As a result, we can opt to choose all of EBSCO health and medical databases to which we subscribe to search at one time. To do this, we'll click Choose Databases above the search field. Then we'll add in the health-related databases, including CINAHL and HealthSource Nursing Academic Edition. 
Then we'll click OK. From here, you'll begin by entering your keywords. Remember, when we made our outline, we had our overarching topic, reducing contamination in phlebotomy, and our subtopics, the role of education, training, and professional development in reducing contamination, the role of standards, methods, and protocol in reducing contamination, and the role of laboratory management in reducing contamination. Each of these provides the basis for an individual search. We'll start broad because remember, your outline will change as you do your research. So we'll enter phlebotomy and contamination. This way, if there are subtopics we should be touching on in our paper, we'll be able to identify them from this larger search. Then we'll press search. We get quite a few results, so we'll want to filter our results using our limiters. Under limit two, you'll see that we have a full text limiter. We are not going to use this limiter today. So it's important to remember that the library does not subscribe to everything that might be a part of a given database or might be returned in your search. So if you locate something to which we do not provide access, you should make a request for the article through Interlibrary Loan. I'll provide a link to our Interlibrary Loan request instructions in the description below. Next, you'll click Peer Review to ensure that you receive works that have gone through a peer review process. If you're not familiar with peer review, See the description for a link to a quick video for more information. Next, you'll click Academic Journals under Source Types. This will ensure that the articles returned in your search are from scholarly publications. Given the speed at which medicine and technology changes, you may also consider limiting your search to research published most recently. In this case, we'll use the date limiter to limit our search to material published between 2015 and 2020. If you feel you still have too many results, try using the subject filter. Just expand the filter if it is closed and click Show More. I suggest alphabetizing the list to make browsing easier. Once you have alphabetized your list, you can go through and select topics you would like to see addressed in your results and click Update. As you can see, this reduces your results significantly. When you're ready to look at an article in your list, click the title. On the left-hand side of the screen, you will see your options for accessing the article. In the center of the page, you will see more information about the article. This can be particularly helpful for a number of reasons. First, the database provides the terms under which the article has been indexed. We can click these linked terms to see all of the materials in the database organized under these terms or we can use these terms to conduct a new, more targeted search. Second, most records provide an abstract of the article. This will give you a brief overview of what the article is about, so you can determine if it is relevant to your project or not. Finally, on the right-hand side of the page, you'll see a number of tools. We won't go over all of them, but you can use the Google Drive tool to send a copy of the article to your Google Drive account, the email tool to email yourself a copy of the article, the Cite tool to generate a citation for the article. Again, please check the accuracy of the citation before handing in your project. And the Permalink tool to save a link to this page. The next database you'll want to try is ProQuest Research Library. Even though ProQuest Research Library looks a little different from Medline, the same strategies will work in this database. To access the database, click ProQuest Research Library from the Medical Laboratory Sciences Research Guide. You'll arrive on the Advanced Search page. In the first field, we'll enter Phlebotomy. In the second field, we'll enter Contamination. We'll click Add a Row since we have more keywords. In the third field, we'll enter Education or Training or Professional Development. Then we'll select Peer Reviewed. If you're not familiar with peer reviewed journals, click the link in the description for a quick and helpful video on this topic. To narrow down our result list, we'll use our limiters. First, under Source Type, you'll want to click Scholarly Journals. Again, given the speed at which medicine and technology change, you may also consider limiting your search to research published most recently. In this case, we'll use the date filter to limit our search to material published between 2015 and 2020. If you still feel you have too many results, try using the subject filter. Just expand the filter if it is closed and click More. I suggest alphabetizing the list to make it easier to browse. Once you have alphabetized your list, you can go through and select topics you would like to see addressed in your result list and click Update. As you can see, this reduces your results significantly. 
If you're unhappy with the way you filtered a search, you can always click Clear All Filters under Applied Filters, or you can remove an individual term or filter by clicking the little X next to it. When you're ready to look at an article in your list, just click the title. At the top of the article, you'll see a menu of tabs. Click Full Text PDF to read the article as a PDF if available. Click Abstract Details to view more information about the article, including a brief abstract. On the upper right side of the page, you'll see several buttons which provide you with extra tools. You can use these buttons to download the PDF, email yourself a copy of the article, print the article, or generate a citation for the article. To generate a citation, click Cite. Then select your preferred style from the drop-down menu. Your style will be generated based on this selection. You can copy and paste the resulting citation into your reference list. However, you should be sure to check a style guide to correct any errors in the generated citation before handing in your assignment. As you scroll down the page, you'll also be given a list of items topically related to the item you are currently viewing. Just click the items in the list to access them. You will also have the option to create a new search from the subject terms under which the article you are currently viewing is indexed. Select the terms you wish to include and click search and refine your search using your limiters once more. Finally, you may want to consult PubMed Central. To access PubMed Central, we'll click PubMed Central from the Websites tab on the Medical Laboratory Sciences Research Guide. PubMed Central is a free full-text archive of biomedical and life sciences journal literature in the U.S. National Institutes of Health National Library of Medicine. It was developed and managed by the National Library of Medicine's National Center for Biotechnology Information. Unlike EBSCO and ProQuest databases, you don't need to place your keywords in separate fields or place AND between each keyword. We can just type in all of our keywords. Phlebotomy, Contamination, Education. Once you click search, you'll see that the drawback of PubMed Central is a limited set of filters. However, you can use the publication date limiter to limit to the most recent publications. In this case, we'll select five years. When you're ready to view an article from your result list, just click the title. In the upper right hand corner, you'll see your options for downloading the article. You'll also be provided with a citation generator. Click Cite and select your preferred citation for the article. Please be sure to check the citation against a style guide for accuracy and make any necessary corrections before handing in your assignment. Similar to ProQuest Research Library, PubMed will alert you to similar articles as you move down the right side of the page. It will also alert you to other articles which have cited the article you're currently viewing. If you need assistance, please know that the librarians are here to help you. While the library will be open for the fall semester, please check the library homepage for the latest information if you intend to use the facilities. Please be advised that if you visit the library, you will be required to wear a face covering for the duration of your visit. Our hours are posted on the right side of the page. Again, please check our hours before visiting as they may change due to adjusted COVID-19 related protocols and holiday closings. You can get in touch with us virtually by emailing reference at farmingdale.edu or by using the Ask a Librarian form on our homepage. You can find this form right under our hours. Just click it and fill out the requested information. Finally, please take advantage of the resources we have assembled just for you. These can be located in the center of the page, just below our main header. I highly recommend checking out our library help videos. Here you'll not only find video tutorials to help you search our most popular databases, but you'll also find step-by-step -step video instructions for formatting citations in APA and MLA styles. Thank you for watching. Again, if you have any questions, a librarian is able to assist you.